like low ticket stuff, you can definitely make money, but it's to me it doesn't really seem like a business. Like it's very you're just looking for a viral product, hopefully sell a bunch of it in two or three months, and then you gotta find the next viral product. So for us, it's more like it's more of a business. It's a longer setup process. You have to make a corporation, get business banking, business credit cards, call suppliers, like form relationships with them. So it's if you start a store, like with an AliExpress product, you could be running ads tomorrow. Yeah. With this, you're probably looking at like a four to five week setup process to even get the thing going. And then, but once you got to get it going, like for, for me now, like I've been making sales with my first sauna brand for like over two years consistently. We've done 100K a month with them every single month since then. Wow. So it's much more of a sustainable long term business. And the scale is, you can scale it as high as you want. So like there are stores doing like hundreds of million dollars a year using the business model. So you can scale it as big as you want, essentially. It's much more of an actual business than like the traditional low ticket AliExpress. And was that what the info product that you bought was predicated on, doing high ticket e-com? Or did you just naturally it, find that yourself? It was, but it was more like, the info product I bought was more like, scale your store to 50K a month and then live on a beach in Thailand. It wasn't about <laughs> actually growing it into a long-term sustainable business, but the, the basic skill set was the same. Yeah, like work with these high-end suppliers, sell expensive stuff rather than like $20 products, sell like two, $3,000 items, and then build it up. And then essentially it's just like a solopreneur, get it to 5K a month and then live in like a third world country and relax. With so you mentioned a couple different products. Do you set up a unique store for each and every product or how's that no. work? So I have like 10,000 products in my store. So oh, I have shit. like, wow. I think now we have like 80 brands and like 10,000 products in my store. So you're essentially just like a big marketplace. Like how I describe it is if you go to Home Depot or go to Walmart, you're not buying Home Depot, Walmart products, right? Like you're buying brands who sell through them. Like they're the retailers for the brands. So where there's that, but online. So we're like the store who partners with the brands and we sell the brands, but we just really target like the high price point stuff. So how do you get people to find your store? And I, I'm assuming that a lot of it has to do with building the brand of like your brand, right? Yeah. Like making it like a Walmart kind of thing. Exactly. Well, like how do you differentiate it? I, I feel guess like no one gives question. a shit about your brand. They just find you organically through SEO, right? Yeah. Or so your brand matters a bit, but it's easy because when, when you're selling brand stuff, customers already know the brands that we're partnered with. So like, for example, if you're going to buy an iPhone, you don't care whether you get it from Amazon or Best Buy. You just want the easiest way, yeah, yeah. And the, like in the best price, essentially. So that's what we're doing is we're just selling existing brand stuff. And then we use Google and Bing to, so when you're advertising on Facebook or TikTok, you're just mar marketing to an audience that likes XYZ or like is this age and this location. With Google and Bing, you can target search terms, like specific searches people it's are like making. It's like intent-based, right? Exactly. So we can target the exact brand names that we're selling. So if I'm selling a Ford car, I can go on Google and, and target a person searching Ford car. So we can just put the product in front of them. Already so what's the, the selling proposition to a, the supplier? Because like you said, it's intent based. Like they people are already searching for these things. Yeah. Why, what is the benefit to them to come across your store instead of the supplier store? Many. So rather than have to hire like a whole bunch of agencies to like run their ads, do their SEO, do their all this, they just like self an affiliate in a way. Almost like an affiliate, but we deal with customer service. Okay. So a big headache for brands is they don't want to have to deal with thousands of customers. So we deal with the customers, we sell the products. So literally all they need to do is manufacture it and ship it. That's so it. you're charging more than them or the same? More. So we usually it's about a 25, 30% margin. If it really varies depending on the product. But for the saunas, it's 25 landed after cost gets sold and shipping. And then, yeah, so we pay them. So if you buy a $10,000 sauna, I would get ten thousand dollars. I would send seventy five hundred to them, and twenty five hundred would be my margin. And it sounds like customer service can make or break this type of business. Because if I'm purchasing yeah. something online for five grand, and I see a bad review, like "Oh, this person ripped me off" or "It didn't work," I'll spend three hundred dollars more buying the same exact product. So is that the biggest benefit for the manufacturer? Is just if shit does go south, since it's your brand, I'm not necessarily taking the hit. It's just that person's brand. Yeah. So a bit of both. So. If we treat our customers bad and you own the brand, it would reflect bad on you as well. So customer services, the way that you differentiate yourself as a high ticket e-commerce store is having responsive customer service. So I, if you go in my store, seven days a week, 12 hours a day, there's someone who will answer your chat right away. So you don't, like you know on Amazon or Wayfair, like you can't really talk to someone that you yeah. sp speak to a robot or you can't really, you, they'll get back to you in two or three days on email. So we have someone literally available like to answer your chat right away and say I'm on phone. Like you call, like we track that, like how quick are the customer services reps answering the phone? How quick are they answering chats? And we want that to be like under 20 seconds. So you get like people who answer the phone right away who'll give the, the answers that you want. And then it just also comes down to like having a nice website with like good reviews, fast loading time, clear information. Like if you're buying a sauna, 
you want to have, you want to know how big it is. You want to know what plug it is. You want to know like how, what the warranty is. You have to have all that on the product page, all the information to min- minimize the questions. But if you have that, like a really nice website, information clearly laid out, good customer service reps that respond quickly, that's how you kind of like differentiate yourself from other stores selling the same yeah, stuff. Yeah, makes sense. So going back to like day one when you just started the store, did you outsource that customer service? Right away, or were you, you know, taking calls and answering chat yeah. messages in between long classes? I was taking the calls and answering the chats between long classes. Like I would like wake up in the middle of the night and like answer calls and stuff to people <laughs> in, in PST time. But I did that for two or three months. I hired, I think, in my second month, my first customer server up. But we were doing it together for a bit, and then I really stepped out of the business last summer, so like May June of twenty two, and that's when I launched my coaching program because I had all that time freed up. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this short clip, check out the full interview here. And if you want to see more clips from this episode, check it out right here.